In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to your graphing calculator. It's called a graphing calculator because it can graph. A couple of really important notes here at the beginning is in order to come back to this home screen where you can add and subtract and use the regular calculator functions, you want to quit. So if you ever get stuck in a menu and you can't get out, you can quit back to this home screen and that's by clicking second and then mode. Also, if things get really messed up in your calculator and it keeps giving you errors and you can't seem to figure out where the error is coming from, you can always reset your calculator back to factory default. And to do that, you go to second plus seven, one, two. And it will clear everything, all your data, all your graphs. It'll reset it back to the default so that you can proceed on. So second plus seven, one, two. You might want to write that down to clear out your calculator if it gets stuck and you can't, you can't figure out how to make it go back to what you want it to be. All right, the graphing calculator is menu based. So when you push on different buttons, it's basically showing you different menus. This row up here are your graphing buttons. Y equals, this is your function editor. So I can type in two X plus three. And this is y equals 2x plus 3. Notice I used this button down here for my variable. This button down here, this one for my variable. A couple of really useful things. If you happen to have the TIA V4 plus CE, you have fun colors, so you can change the color. You can also change the line if you want to change it to something else. Even if you don't have um, a TI-84 plus E, you can change that line to different things. I got to go down, hit OK. There we go. Um, if some of you do not have that feature, but if you keep hitting enter, it will change that different uh, line for you. To turn the graph on and off, you'll hit equals. So you can see right now there's no black box. There's something just flashing there. So it's not going to graph. But if I hit enter, now it's solid black. So it's going to graph. So let's graph it. So let's go to graph. And there it is. That's the graph of the line. If I click trace, you can see it gives me some points that are on this line. So if the teacher asked you to graph it on graphing paper, now you have some points that you could plot to make yours match this one. So 0, 3, let me go up here to, it looks like 1, 5. And actually, if you type in the number on the calculator, it'll tell you what the y is. If I type in two, it says my y is seven. If I type in three, it says my y is nine is another point that's on that graph. So you could plot three, nine on your graph paper and graph it. Another place that you can see these values that are on the graph is in the table, which is up here in blue. So that means you hit the second button and then graph and you can see the table of values. So zero, three, one, five, two, seven, three, nine. Let's say a teacher asked you to, to figure out f of x equals 2x plus 3 for a bunch of different x's, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You could use your table feature to just have a list of them right there. You can scroll up and you'll see negative numbers, and you can scroll down and you can see positive numbers. To change the table, there's a couple of different things you can do here. You see where it says table set right there? If I hit second window, this says, where do you want your table set to start? So let's say the teacher asked me for f of negative 100. Well, I don't want to scroll all the way to negative 100, but I can put negative 100 right here. And then when I go back to the graph, or back to the table, now it's starting at negative 100. Back to the table set again. Let's say I don't want to go by ones, I want to go by threes. I can change that, what the x values are going by. Another really useful thing is to change the independent variable to ask sometimes. So if I go to table, now I can plug in any x value that the teacher asked me to find. If she asked me to find f of 9, I could find that it's 21. If she asked me to find f of 125, <laughs> I can find that it's 253. So that ask feature is really, really useful. Again, if your table doesn't look right when the teacher asks you to do something, second plus seven, one, two, we'll reset that, or you can go back to the table set feature up here and change it back to auto. 
And then when you go back to the table, it will just automatically generate numbers for you. Let's talk about the window. So the window right now is set to negative 10, 10 with an X scale of one. That means when I look at my graph here, it's going from negative 10 to 10 on the X axis and negative 10 to 10 on the Y axis. Now let's say the teacher asked me to graph 2X plus 30. And I hit graph and I don't see anything. Let me clear my, my history. Now, why not? Well, you might know that the y-intercept is 30 here, and my window is just going from negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10. So it's not going up. My y-value is not going up high enough. So I need to go back down here to the y-max and maybe change it to 40 so that I can see that y-intercept of 30. That's what the window is for. If your window looks funky and you want to put it back to the normal, if you go to Zoom and then Standard, it'll reset it back to the 10, 10, 10, 10. You can also zoom in. So let's go back to my window of a Y max of 40. Yeah, let's say I want to zoom in on this area right here because I really want to see what the Y intercept is. See my little spider there? I can put it up here and zoom in on this area. And then I can see, oh, I would like to know what that point is. If I hit trace, it tells me it is 0, 030. Again, I'm going to go back to zoom standard. And I can't see my window, or I can't see my graph. But if I change this to 30 or 40, 40 is better because then 30 will actually show up. Now I'm back to where I can see my graph again. Okay, so y equals is where you type in your equation. Window is where you set how big this is so that you can see the part of the graph that you're looking at. Zoom is just what it says it is. Trace is just what it says it is. It gives you a little spider. And as you move left and right, you don't want to move up and down. It's only changing the x values. You are only in control of the x value. That's your independent variable. The y value is dependent on this. So this is what you're changing. And then graph is graphing. Table is where it shows me that fun table of values that's on the graph. Table set is where I can change what this table looks like. Let's talk about calculate for just a second, that second trace. Here you can calculate any value. You can also find the zeros, also known as the x-intercepts, the minimum, the maximum, and an intersection in a graph. This is calculus stuff, so we're not going to talk about that in this video. And that's your quick overview of the graphing features.